Yes, Wendy, I am in fact here in uh, deep, deepest Cornwall in uh, imbued at uh, Bot UK, and I, I'm joined by Nick Smith, uh, CEO of uh, Bot UK. Fantastic welcome already, so Good. thank you very much for that. Welcome to Bude, this wonderful place. Yeah, we can hear the seagulls in the background. <laughs> it's a bit chilly this morning, yeah. um, but we've got a bit of an action-packed morning. Yes. And um, what can we expect to see on our tour of the factory? Well, I'm delighted. You're going to see a very busy factory, and you're going to see the whole end-to-end -end process. And more importantly, you're going to see, I think, a very motivated team that are there to deliver. So hopefully a lot of smiles as well. OK, shall we get on with it? Let's do it. OK. So we're here in this lovely new showroom. Um, Nick, I think be, our members would be interested to know a little bit about the history of course. Of, of, of bots. Can you, can you just fill us in? Yeah, for sure. So actually, we were formed in 1973. We were called the Lock Panel Company then, right. based in Leicester. Yes. And I think after a number of family holidays, I thought, well, Bude would be a great place to come. So in 1975, mm -hmm. moved the factory down to Bude yep. uh, on another industrial site, actually, and the business grew and grew. Okay. Um, and then in 1982, actually, the business was uh, sold to the Bot Group, and this then became Bot Limited in the UK. So the Bot Group has over 90 years uh, of trading now, and we will be almost 50 years next year uh, in the UK. Okay. So a lot of experience here as well. Um, we also built a vehicle conversion business in 1991, which is based in Ashby. Yeah. And that's gone from strength to strength as market leaders as well. So okay. we're present across the UK in, in Scotland as well. So, yeah, it's really grown since then. Looking forward to a tour of the factory. Should we, should we have a look round? Let's do it. So, yes, I'm joined by Andy Paul, uh, Operations Manager here at BOT. Um, a lot of activity, Andy. What's going on in this particular section? Okay, so this section is, is our punching cell. We have four machines running pretty much 24-7. Uh, we process five or six different types of material, okay. and depending on mix of work, between 250 and 300 tonnes of material every month. Every month? Every month. Wow. Yeah. And how many people are employed here? So across the business, we've got about 100, 180 imbued at the moment. Wow. Um, within this section, so we run on two shifts, um, and we run with four people on, on, on each shift. OK. Um, shall we move on? Where are we going next? OK, so from here, we head through to our folding section. Let's do that. OK. now Andy? So we're now in our folding section. Uh, the flat components come through from the press shop to be folded into components ready for fabrication and assembly. We run seven press brakes, three panel vendors, currently running two shifts with a little bit of overtime as well. Wow and I understand there's some investment going on in this area. There is, really excited. We've got a, a strategic investment into another panel vendor that's happening in the next next few weeks. Okay. Um, so we're in the process of making a space to help us with capacity sort of you know, the, the flexibility, reducing our lead times, making sure that we're on point with supply. Okay, great. Fantastic. Let's move on. Okay, cool. So, Rich, here, we're in our panel bending section. This is a, an automated machine. Next level of quality, repeatability, and just output. These machines are fantastic. Uh, which is why we bought another one, to be honest. <laughs> All part of the investment. Absolutely. OK, Andy, here we are in fabrication, a lot of activity. What's going on? So here, Rich, we're employing a mixture of spot welding, MIG welding and TIG welding techniques. We bring the folded components together, make the sub-assemblies, um, generate that, that modularity in those sub-assemblies so that we can go through ready for assembly. OK, um, shall we move on to powder coating? Yep, let's do that. Okay. 
Well, we made it. Uh, it's a big facility, Andy. Um, this is powder coating. Tell us a little bit about that. So here, Ritz, we're applying uh, an epoxy polyester powder to give a, a really reliable, robust finish that's easy to maintain. We're painting our house grey at the moment. Uh, we offer a wide range of colours. People want to customise. We have a, a flexible plant that allows us to do that. Uh, at the moment, we're running uh, maybe 10 or 12 hours per day, so we do have some capacity here. Um, so the parts next, uh, we'll head through to assembly. Yep. But um, we take real care at this point because ultimately when someone opens the package, the finish is the first thing that they see and we want the right impression. So we then we've got we've got next is assembly and then yep. dispatch. That's it. That's it. Yep. Okay. So what we've seen here is an end-to-end -end process actually. Absolutely, absolutely. So we, we take in sheets of steel and generate a finished product right the way through. Um, being in control of that, that production process here um, has helped us through the, 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 the problems in the last couple of years. Um, we do it all in-house um, and it's, it's awesome, absolutely awesome. British made, local, sustainable, giving jobs to the local economy, absolutely. ticks a lot of boxes for joy. Andy, thank you so much for bringing us around this morning. It's been absolutely fascinating. Uh, brilliant. Thank you. My pleasure, Richard. Thank, thank you. you. Cheers. So I'm joined now by Mandy Bickle, Channel Development Manager for Bot UK. Hi. Thank you very much for the morning that we've had here. We've, you've been fantastic hosts and I, I think uh, we really got to know and understand the manufacturing side of the business. But you're responsible for the sales, Mandy. I am, um, yes. How could our members perhaps engage a little bit more with Bot. What is it about Bot that you feel uh, makes it easy to sell your products? So we spend uh, all of our marketing budget on brand building. Yeah. The Bot brand is really well known across the market and we're really hoping that end users will be asking the members for Bot products. Uh, so really they just need to be keeping their eyes and ears open mm. and then we can support them every step of the way. Yes. You know, we will do joint visits, we can design a layout for the end user, and because we're indirect, you know, all of that will then come back for an order for the member. Yes, yeah. So your approach, even though our members might not have storage and systems like that central to their business, your approach is very consultative, it, it strikes me. Definitely, you know, projects are really on the increase at the moment and we want to help the member to win more of those orders. You know, they're local and, and the end users really need a trusted partner when yeah. they're going to invest on a big project like that. Mm. And when they buy bot, they also get the guarantee that our products will last for 10 years at yeah. least. So it gives credibility to the member as well. Yeah, yeah. You're at Troy Means Business next month. We are. Mm -hmm. March 17th. Yes. All looking forward to it. Um, yeah, what motivated you to spend your marketing budget on the stand? <laughs> Well, just to keep in contact with those members, sure. you know, the ones that we're working with regularly, but also to show the potential new members yes. what they can what they can get with product and service from working with Bot. Yes, yeah. One thing, not perhaps so connected with sales, but I've noticed a number of Bot lorries, big lorries in the uh, dispatch area. Do you have your own transport? We do, yes. Wow. Yeah, okay. it's really important for us to do that. Because when an end user has invested thousands of pounds, you know, to have a project from bot, it, it would be terrible if that got delivered damaged or late or yes. with some kind of defect. Yes. So the fact that we can deliver it with our own truck, with our own driver, uh, who will offload the product for the end user and give that service right up until the end. Yeah, so that is a true end-to-end -end service, isn't it? It is. Well, Nick, that was a really interesting look around the, the, the factory there. And we saw examples of both innovation and sustainability in action. And I'm just wondering what the future holds for, uh, for, for, for you guys here yeah. at UK. Well, it's a good question. I think the last two years have taught us many things. Innovation, we have to be agile. 
Um, we've seen a lot of investment in our value engineering and how we invest in new machinery to cope with the rising cost of raw materials, so we have to always look to reduce waste. Yes. Our digital assets is really important as well, so this is something that's really grown for us and we spend a lot of money on. So how we present our workspace storage units on our websites for our customers yes. is really important. Yes. Every consumer wants to see the ins and outs and, and play with configurations in their, whether it's in their domestic homes now, right, or, or in project studios. So a lot more digital asset futures as well. And one thing I'm particularly proud of, Richard, is the UK manufacturing piece here. Having that end-to-end -end process, but we're seeing a lot more rest of world growth as well. And I yeah. think that's really good for UK manufacturing. Yeah, absolutely. It's ticking a lot of boxes, actually, for uh, initiatives in, inside Troy, which is innovation, sustainability, et cetera, et cetera. So, so um, yeah, um, Nick, thanks very much for that. Thank um, you for being you've here. You've been great hosts. And, um, yeah, we look forward to uh, furthering our relationship with you.